Many people living along the Mississippi River in Iowa breathing a sigh of relief this morning as we're watching some of the floodwaters begin to recede. The National Weather Service said that melting snow coming from Wisconsin and Minnesota caused water levels in the Mississippi River to swell. And then after weeks of rising, the river hit its peak on Monday at over 21 feet. The National Weather Service saying that many of the crests ranked in the top 10 of all time slightly lower than forecasted and lower than the 22 feet peak that was set in 2019. The water levels were still very high though, enough to test the region's flood defenses. Flood preparation efforts from the city leaders in Davenport, Iowa, for example, helped that city avoid a catastrophe. And that includes some new flood walls, twice as high as the previous flood walls had been. I wanna bring in Mike Madsen now. He is the mayor of Davenport, Iowa, to talk more about the situation. Uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you for giving us some time. Are you out of the woods at this point? Not out of the woods, but the, the water's on the way down and our barriers have held. So. Uh, we feel pretty good, but until the water's back in its place, um, we'll just keep a great eye on what's going on. All right, this was a big test of your flood defense systems. It sounded like it held up pretty good, but where are you seeing the most of the water right now? So it's in our, what we call grass and concrete areas, our parks um, along the river, uh, Long River Drive, of course, our West End by Concord uh, and that area, they flood really early at 13 feet. And as you said, this is a over 21 foot flood. So they're impacted a lot, but we have some pretty good berms there. Uh, we have a lot of barriers. We have a lot of pumps. And as I think, you know, we do this all the time. We, just, we live with the river. Uh, it comes and, and, and recedes. We put up our barriers. We rehearse, we practice, we pre-position as you are showing right now. Um, that's double the size of what that the berry was in 2019. So we learn our lessons and we deal with the Mississippi uh, as one of our greatest assets, but sometimes we have to work with her. Yeah, you live with the river, you love the river, you've got to be able to go with the flow, uh, pun intended, I guess. Yeah. Um, we do see sometimes people drive through floodwaters. Have you had any experience with people getting trapped, stranded, any injuries as a result? Not, not really. We do have folks that want to test the waters and drive through a little bit. Um, and we, you know, strongly caution them against it because sometimes the vehicle stalls. But we did a good job. Most of the people that are impacted, again, on our West End severely, they, they boat in and boat out or we work well with the Red Cross. We have a shelter uh, if they want to stay overnight uh, for a few nights there and, and provide some assistance. And then we asked the governor to, to issue a disaster declaration. We, uh, she was kind enough to give that. And so we have individual assistance for folks if needed. But that's not very many people. Tell me how this compares to 2019 when the river crested then and some of the changes, specifically those new flood walls uh, that are larger, how that came into play. Yes, ma'am, great question. So 2019 um, difference was we had an inundation of rain. The flood lasted for over a month. We had three different crests to include the record crest of over 22, but the flood barriers, we call them, um, weren't as big as they are now. So working with our friends from the Corps of Engineers, and they've been great. They've been with us every step of the way. They gave us a forensic analysis after 2019. So we simply built this wider, taller, and stronger. And then we fortified some places, uh, as you just shown, uh, where the uh, barrier broke in 2019. Uh, that one's strong right now. And, uh, you know, because the water's on the way down, we're, we're really confident it worked. But until the Mississippi gets back where she's supposed to be, we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed. I'm, but glad, I'm glad it worked. Fact, it's just bigger. Right, exactly. Bigger, better in this case. Um, I'm glad that it worked. How expensive was this project and, and when did it get finished? Um, we put this, the barriers up in two and a half days because we pre-positioned uh, and, and, and practiced, but a couple hundred thousand dollars. Hey, uh, worth the investment, right? If it protects homes and businesses. Uh, what's the forecast calling for right now, Mr. Mayor? We're pretty dry. We're looking at 70s and 80s. Um, we've had some pretty good wind, but we think by next week, uh, it'll, it'll be significantly lower. And then in two weeks, we think the river will be back where it's supposed to be. All right, we like that. And back to baseball season, it looks like a, a little water hazard outside the stadium at this point. Uh, glad those water levels are receding. Put the plans in place. Don't you love when things work how you expect them to? <laughs> um, it's an old adage of learn from what you did and do better, right? And I'm very proud of our public works folks and all the city staff uh, that have worked 24-7 to keep this going. I mean, I'm here talking with you, but it's the folks on the ground 
uh, that are doing the work and keeping us safe. Yep, and that's the priority in every single one of these situations, uh, human life first and foremost. Uh, Mayor Mike Madsen from Davenport, uh, our best to you. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for covering. I wish you the best also. You too. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.